gentlemen, thank you. On behalf of our 14,000 employees, I am pleased to say, welcome to EcomCon, the most technologically advanced yet socially conscious company on the Fortune 500. Yeah, right. In this state-of-the-art research and development center, we're taking the next step in computer processor evolution, and we're creating a new age of innovation and customer service. How about a new age of invading your customers' privacy? Yes, <laughs> sir. Are you sure you're on the right tour? Yeah. Why don't you tell us about that Octium 4 chip you're developing? Well, the um, Octium 4 is our latest high-speed processor. It's uh, capable of 6.8 gigaflops. That's nearly 7 billion calculations per second. I mean, tell us the truth. How the Octium is secretly designed to keep tabs on the users. Patriot 1 to Patriot 2, we're in position. It's got a tiny little modem embedded in each processor, see? So that it can upload your files onto the internet. And your credit history, and your tax bracket, and your social security number. All neatly packaged for these robber barons. Sir, I don't know if this is the proper form. And another thing. Patriot 2. Patriot 2. We're in position. Shut up already. Uh... Is there peanuts in this?
won't do for the Constitution. Yeah, like having a roll tight and shoved up our kazoo. At least it feels like that. <clears throat> We're not gonna let this injustice stand. We gotta stop these corporate goons from doing to the American people what, what they did to us last night. Yeah, right. What's the matter, Byers? The matter is we don't have the proof. Without proof, we're nothing more than conspiracy mongers. Without proof, all we can do is cry wolf. Don't take it personally, man. They strip searched all of us. 11 years we've been putting out this paper. Think about it. Have we really made a difference? Is America a better place to live because of our efforts? This story would have garnered national attention. It would have forced Ecom Khan to halt the production of the Octium chip. It would have protected the civil liberties of millions of Americans. But without proof? <laughs> Well, we can still speculate, can't we? We'll call it editorial commentary. For whom? Last week's issue had a circulation of 2,824. We're preaching to the converted. The readership doesn't matter, man. It's the impact on the black ops that counts. They read it, too. The guys at the NSA and the CIA, they tremble every time we put out one of these babies. You think the people at EcomCon are trembling? Oh, well, they will if we get that chip back. Like that's gonna happen. Ecom Khan's already got the Justice Department searching for the dude that snaked it from us. The only they're looking for a he. Are you sure that man with a beard was Eva Del Harlow? Trust me, no guy kisses like that. I mean, uh... I hear Harlow's a black hat, a real heavy lifter. Industrial espionage, strictly for profit. Then she's probably already sold the chip to the highest bidder, the Malaysians or the Japanese. That sucks! We stole it! What the hell are you doing? Our operation was piggyback. There's only one way Harlow could know our plans. You believe she breached our security? Testing one, two, three, you bitch! That's twice today I've been violated. That's it, man. Total war. Salt the earth. Gunman Newspaper Group, buyer speaking. Yes, I'm his son. Bertram R. Byers. The R stood for Roosevelt, which is a name fit for a true believer if ever I heard one. A true believer. That was Bert in the 30 odd years that I was lucky enough to call him a friend. He never lost his faith in government and its abiding power to do good, its muscular Christianity. It's brass here to make a spittoon. As a civilian employee in the Air Force, Bert jokingly described himself as a plotting bureaucrat. But he never lost his, his love for aerospace, his chosen profession, his true love. Which is why today, in accordance with his wishes, we commend his ashes to that bold frontier that he loved so well. Godspeed, Bert. Would you do the honors? Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. So you never met him? Byers and his old man hadn't spoken since 1989. The year we started publishing? The year Byers threw away a government pension to hang out with a couple of low-life hippie scum. That's, that's what his old man thought. Froehicke, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock what? One spine chip stealing little crossdresser. Ow! Whoa! What are you doing? You got soup. Next time, leave the crack pipe at home. Hey, buddy. Nice service. Looks like your old man had a lot of friends in high places. Yeah, maybe we could plant bugs on a couple of them. Or maybe now's not the time. I'm about ready to get out of here. John, we met once years ago. 
I'm Ray Helm. I work with your father. Oh, Mr. Helm, your eulogy was very nice. Thank you. I meant every word of it. I was hoping you and I could talk about him. I realize you hadn't seen each other in some time. I'm just not sure what there is to talk about. We could talk about how he died. According to the police, his car ran off the road. Like I said, we could talk about that. It happened here. Police rule it a single car accident. There are no witnesses to it, but based on the lack of skid marks, their explanation was your father fell asleep at the wheel and ran off the road. But you don't believe that. You're not saying my father killed himself. I'm saying he was murdered. I don't know where Bert was headed. I don't know that it mattered. Just so he was driving a lonely stretch of road. A perfect place for an ambush. Absolutely none, which is exactly the way these people would manage it. The people your father and I worked for. Government? But why? Why my father? He was a company man. He was a good man. He had a conscience. Sometimes that's a problem in our line of work. Meaning what? Last time I spoke to him, he was upset about something he'd found out. He wouldn't tell me what. Hold up. Something, uh, something's funky here. You're telling us the government is behind this? You're the government. If you're anything like your father, I knew you'd want to know. Hey, buddy, are you sure you want to do this? Besides, that government guy said there wouldn't be any proof your dad was murdered. It was murdered. There'd have to be a reason for it. And Mr. Helms said maybe he knew something. I want to see what's on his PC. Get this carpet's wet. Like it's been cleaned. Check it out. Well, the good news is there's no annoying passwords to crack. Uh, what's the bad news? There's no nothing else either, only an operating system. Someone cleaned the house. Erased everything and defragged this puppy. Try a sector editor. See if you can find any recently deleted files. E-I-N-G-O. Delete commands up the wazoo. Hey, wait, what about this one? Looks like a DOD file. Scenario 12D. Text file. What the? Hey, Byers, finally! Come look at this. That's blood, and a lot of it. I thought your old man died in a car crash. My father was dead long before the crash. He was murdered here. Caprice. Yeah, we got it. 
You know, I don't get it. You're saying somebody popped your father in his living room, then loaded him into his car and faked a car crash two miles away. Now, that's a hell of a trick. A dead man driving a car? They managed it somehow. There's got to be evidence in the car that the fire didn't destroy. You're Bertram Byers. Uh, yeah. Date of birth, January 30, 1934. Viagra. He's over young. Back yonder? Hey, stop! Hold up! Hey, wait! Shut him down! Stop! Shut him down! Hang on! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! Come on, shut it down! Shut it. Stop! Hey! This gun! This was your caprice! Hope you didn't leave nothing in the glove box. Nice shooting. Have you seen Kimmy? You want some? Try my smorgasbord. Hey! Never touch a man with a gun in his hand. You shooting Vikings now? That's not very sporty. What do you want, Langley? I'm locked and loaded here. I need some help circumventing DOD's online security code. DOD? What for? Go put your daisy in somebody else's rifle, hippie. I gotta put some serious lead down range. You're talking about government-sanctioned murder here. What is this, another one of your wacko conspiracy theories? Like who shot JR? JFK. Whatever. My point being, you're wasting your life, man. A hacker of your caliber ought to be floating in a Silicon Valley hot tub, sipping champers, and counting his IPO cashola. My chihuahua, who's that? Hello, hacker. Her name's Eve Harlow. I like you better with a beard. Where's our chip? Chip? What chip? That Octium 4 is rightfully ours. Give it the hell back. You got an Octium 4? And what did you three stooges plan to do with the chip? Give it 60 minutes, expose the truth in your silly little rag. The American people have a right to know. If you pimply pencil necks, the only hope for the American people, God help us all. Come on, Langley. Let's go do some real hacking. Find anything? Yeah, new meaning for the term compact car. Boy, talk about a needle in a haystack. If there is any evidence in this hunk of junk, we're gonna be hard pressed to find it. We'll find it. <laughs> and then what? Then you'll be happy? I'm not sure I understand the question. What's the best thing that could come out of this investigation, as far as you're concerned? You find out that your father was going to blow the whistle on the government. You find out they killed him for it. What's your point? Oh, come on, Byers. We both know that you and your father didn't see eye to eye. You're hoping you'll find out he was someone you could respect. But what if he wasn't? My father used to talk about JFK when I was a kid. Camelot, a government as good as its people. An American dream. I don't know when or why he stopped believing in it, but those stories made me who I am. They made me believe in the promise of our country. Truth, justice, 
the American way. Someone has to expose those that would destroy that dream. Someone has to write the stories they don't want you to read. That's why I teamed up with you guys. You're true believers. And I thought it was for the chick throw off. Look, all I'm saying is I don't want you setting yourself up for a disappointment. I'm saying make peace with your father in another way. What is it? Needle in a haystack. We're in. A piece of cake. My old granny could hack this site. Okay, where to next? Okay, uh, products and logistics. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Program analysis and evaluation. We're looking for any reference to something called Scenario 12D. We got it. The proverbial smoking gun. Hey, Kimmy, slumming? He's helping me hack into the DOD mainframe. Yeah, I only said yes to keep Blondie from getting his nads clipped. We ran into Eva Del Harlow at the shooting range. I didn't want to cause a scene, you know, your old man and all. So what do you got? We found this in the engine compartment of my father's car. You'll notice that none of the circuits have factory identifier numbers. And this copper zigzag looks like uh, an integrated antenna. Etched into the breadboard like a cell phone. We're thinking... If this received radio signals and was clipped to the car engine's control module... The speed of the car could be remotely controlled. All you'd need is a handheld radio controller to operate the car. And make it look like a dead man was driving. Huh? Yes, I am the king. Numero uno, baby. Mm -mm. Find something? Yeah, I wound up in some government think tank's upload directory. Here's your scenarios, ladies. These look like counterterrorism scenarios, war games developed for the Defense Department. What's scenario 12D? Airline terrorism? That doesn't make sense. Your father was murdered over a war game? Download it. Uh-oh. Ixnay on the download day. What is it? Bogey. We've been spotted. Sir, we've got an intruder. I'm tracing. They're running some real-time intrusion detection. Somebody knows we're in. We should ditch. Keep downloading. These guys are murderers, buyers. Give it some thought, man. I've isolated their bitstream DSL DC Metro trunk. Compromised our cookie. Stay with it. They're scanning our services. We're almost there. Keep going. Come on board. Scanning for vitals. I'm bailing. They're scanning our file system. We need that file. Here we go. Address data file. Oh, my God. They found a data file. They're going to get our address. They'll be busted through our door. Keep downloading. We almost had it. We almost had our asses fried. My father died for that file. Exactly. Use your head. Lost him. Sorry, sir. I know who they are. What do you say we call it a night, Byers? Oh, it's too late for that. Ah, sun just came up. Come on, Byers. I'll buy you a grand slam. It just doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? The blood in my father's house. Buddy, we've been through this. They shot him. Why? Why go to the trouble of faking a car accident so perfectly, so convincingly, and you're starting with a body that's got a bullet hole in it. Maybe your dad put up a fight. Maybe it wasn't his blood.
We found something. Proof. Of what? My father wasn't murdered. But not for lack of trying. I don't understand. Are you saying it was an accident? We're saying he's not dead. It starts with a bloodstain we found in my father's house. We've had it tested. The blood wasn't his. Whose was it? His would-be assassin. A professional sent to make his death look like an accident. The carpet in the living room had been freshly shampooed. We assumed it was to get rid of the blood evidence. It was the second time. He shot himself? Some professional. Hey, government contractor. In the aftermath, Dad realized he was in danger. I imagine his first impulse was to run. But then he started to piece together the larger plan. He found the remote control that the assassin had attached to his car. Someone was going to great lengths to fake his death in a car accident, to murder him without arousing suspicion. So he came up with his own plan. Dad knew whoever would go to such lengths would only stop if he were dead. So he made it look like he was. What reason did they have to kill your father? What were they trying to hide? Something called Scenario 12D. We have to find Bert. He can tell us everything we need to know. We don't know where he is. We gotta find out what Scenario 12D is. That's why we need your help, as a government muckety muck. We need your password to get past online security. What is it? Overlord. Cool. Whatever I can do to help. Good. I'll catch up with you later. Why is he so bummed? His dad's alive. Yeah, but he may never see him again. John. Dad. What the hell are you doing? Why can't you stay out of this? Leave me buried. What is scenario 12D? We know it's a war game scenario, that it has to do with airline counterterrorism. Why is that important enough to kill for? because it's no longer a game. If some terrorist group wants to act out this scenario, why target you for assassination? Depends on who your terrorists are. The men who conceived of it in the first place. You're saying our government plans to commit a terrorist act against a domestic airline. There you go. Indicting the entire government, as usual. It's a faction, a small faction. For what possible gain? The Cold War's over, John. But with no clear enemy to stockpile against, the arms market's flat. But bring down a fully loaded 727 into the middle of New York City, and you'll find a dozen tin pot dictators all over the world just clamoring to take responsibility and begging to be smart bombed. I can't believe it. Th this is about increasing arms sales. Mm -hmm. When? Tonight. How are you going to stop them? 
Why didn't you tell the world this? Go to the press. You think I'd still be drawing breath 30 minutes after I made that call? The press? Who's gonna run this story? We would. This? This is Birdcage Liner. Wild-eyed crap right up there with Elvis as an alien and two-headed babies. You obviously read it. Don't be so damn naive. You think this is gonna save the world? I'm doing what I can, John. I don't have all the specifics on Scenario 12D, but I think I know the flight they've chosen. You stay out of it. I don't want Overlord gunning for you, too. Feeling better? We're on the job here, Byers. I think we're making some real headway. Hey, buddy. Are you okay? I just saw my father. Where? At his house. He's there now. What did he say? <laughs> After he hit me? He told me to stay away from him, not to get involved. I gotta get over there. Mr. Helm, be careful. He doesn't trust you either. He thinks you were somehow involved in the attempt on his life. What the hell are you doing? What if Helms is involved? What if he's using us to get to your father? You might have ratted out on your dad. That was their plan. Put the son in danger, and you flush the father out of hiding. We had a couple of portable hydrocarbon sniffers. Where are they? What? Fires? Somebody get that? Let him in before somebody sees him. Oh, yeah. Congrats on not being dead. Oh, the day is young. Byers, you want to clue us in? We got a plane to catch. Deal with this. Said yourself, we don't know the full extent of this conspiracy. We can't trust any government official. Only hope is to get on that plane. They're boarding. Then that's two problems solved. Luggage hole's clear if this thing can be trusted. What'd you do, make it with your erector set? You're absolutely sure that this is the targeted flight? This flight was chosen primarily for its visibility. It's scheduled to pass over Manhattan on its way to Boston. You said they intend to bring this down in the middle of New York City? What if there is no bomb? Well, how are they gonna bring it down? The same way a dead man can drive a car. What do you mean, no bomb? Langley, I need you to hack into the aircraft's onboard navigation system. We need to know where we're headed. Okay, go into headsets. I'll call on the Air Force carrier. Make them think we're sending a ground air fax. That's one twisted Star 69. Well, just get ready to ride the wave, hippie boy. Just get me on that plane and I'll get you autopilot access. How are you going to do that? Airline telemetry systems use processors similar to those found in CB radios. I'm in. We got ourselves a convoy. 
What's your progress? I've hacked into the flight control system output. With a little bit of help. It's what the brains of the plane is telling the little black box. Force heading, attitude hold, yaw axis stabilization. What? What the heck's that? Is that what it looks like? I think it is what it looks like. What does what look like? Modem protocol. Remote access. Somebody on the ground's flying your plane. Bogey, sir. Keep your course. We need to know our flight plan. I'm mapping the data now. Fires. Your flight's gonna make an unscheduled stop in exactly 22 minutes. Corner of Liberty and Washington, Lower Manhattan. World Trade Center. I'm going to crash the plane into the World Trade Center. I'll tell the flight crew. Landing. Can you override the flight control system? I'm working on it. What is this? My name is Bert Byers. I work for the government. I believe this plane has been commandeered. Sir, uh, passengers are not allowed in the cockpit. I need you to return to your seat now. You don't have control of this plane, and I don't know if we can get it back. Turn off your autopilot. There may be a chance that we can override it. Uh, sir, I'll be happy to contact your superiors in the government. To uh, sir, damn it! He's right. Frozen again. They've encrypted the manual override commands. Well, decrypt them. I don't have enough power. My CPUs are pegged. Langley, what's happening? I'll try decrypting in background mode. Well, how long will that take? In my counts per sec, I estimate seven to ten days. Oh. Needless to say, our asses are fried. Where are you going? To unfry us. Melvin, I knew you'd come begging sooner or later. Lay off the Melvin crap. I need some serious gigaflops, and I need them now. What I hear, some guy with a beard took that chip. Those were a woman's lips I kissed. Like you ever kissed a gal before. I don't have time for this. You gonna take it away from me? Give us the chip, Eve, or you'll be sacrificing the lives of hundreds of people, including Byers and his father. I'm crying. Yeah, you're one real tough cookie. How much you can enjoy spending the millions you make selling that chip when you realize it's been paid for in blood. I guess you don't know me. Well, maybe I do, Lee Harvey Oswald. Your name, Eva Del Harlow, is an anagram of Lee Harvey Oswald. Some joke. I know who you really are, sugar. And I can tell the world in my silly little rag. All right, try cutting electrical power. I've thought of that. I've thought of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're experiencing some uh, technical difficulties up here. At this time, we'd like you all to return to your seats. And kiss your asses goodbye. Finally, we're getting close. I know, I know. New York Center, this is Atlantic National Flight 265 Heavy. We are declaring an emergency. We have 110 souls on board, 16,000 pounds of fuel, and no dangerous goods or cargo to report. Come on, bro, Hickey. The funds have failed, haven't they? There's still hope. Hope my next turn out is as nice as my last one.
manual override. your testimony, we can break this conspiracy wide open, bring Overlord down, the whole operation. Dan, what is it? God, I see myself in you. The same youthful enthusiasm, idealism. I was so angry at you for so long. I didn't want you to waste your life tilting at windmills. But I, I see now that you've got something I never had. You're a brave man, John. You're not going to testify. You're going to let them cover this up. They almost killed me twice. They won't fail a third time. My silence will keep me alive. And you? I know you and your friends are fighting for the American dream. Just don't expect to win. So we're going with this then? We can't do it. We don't have the proof. And then we don't have a lead story for this week's issue. Yeah, we do. Well, we certainly don't have proof for that. Your pistol-packing bearded lady has it, remember? Yeah? Well, turnabout's fair play. How the hell'd you get that? Hey, once you've had a little taste of Froiki. Okay, I grabbed it, I ran. Huh? You got a story to write. this.